All right, hi everyone, how's it going? And welcome to another video. I hope everyone is doing well. Today, I would like to do another movie review. The last movie review I did, last video I did, was on a movie called Burnt Offerings. And that was a psychological horror film. This movie that I'm going to be doing a review on is of the subgenres psychological horror as well as the slasher subgenre. So the movie I'm going to do a review on is called Don't Go in the House. And this film came out in 1979. Sometimes they'll say that it came out in 1980, but from what I understand, it was actually 1979 that this movie came out. And this movie is very polarizing in terms of how people think of it. Some people really like this movie and think it's great. And some people don't like it at all. They think it's trash. So I want to kind of give my take on this film, what I thought of it. Now, like I said, it is a slasher film, but you know, also he has elements of being a psychological horror film as well. A lot of people refer to this film as being very similar to the film Psycho. That's often mentioned about this movie. And another striking thing about this film is the house it's filmed in. A lot of people will talk about the house as the house being very strange and creepy and huge. This movie was filmed in a house that was built in 1893 in the Atlantic Highlands, which is in New Jersey. It was built by a wealthy German immigrant who had this house built. I guess he was a merchant. He was an importer of a large variety of goods. He lived in New York but in the summer times, he would take a ferry with his family to this summer home that he had built. And he had servants. He had a staff of about five servants. So, you know, they really lived in luxury in this huge mansion. You know, it was the Gilded Age at this time. So there were people who just had these, like, huge mansions built. And supposedly in the Atlantic Highlands of New Jersey, there were a number of them. And a lot of these mansions had a lot of rooms in them. This mansion, and it's called the Strauss Mansion because his name was Rudolf Strauss. The mansion has 21 rooms. And apparently what then happened was Rudolf Strauss died in 1905. His heirs sold the house in 1907 to an owner who owned the house until the 30s. Then from the 30s until 1980, there were 12 different owners. At one point, it had even been apartments. And then it really fell into disrepair. They were gonna tear it down, but then a historical society stepped in, purchased the house, and it became a historical society museum. They renovated part of it, but there's still a lot of it that still looks the same way it did in this movie. You know, a lot of it still looks the same. An interesting side note, the Historical Society actually shows this film, Don't Go in the House, every October. So I thought that was kind of cool that they would do that. It's a cool movie poster as well. I like a lot of these movie posters for these movies. I like how they did them. I know you could buy this movie poster online. I think I saw it for about $40. But uh, anyways, getting to the film. Like I said, the film came out in 1979. It was directed by Joseph Ellison. He only did one other film after this, and that was a 1986 film called Joey. That was his only other film that he had done. 
But the main character is a character by the name of Donnie Kohler. And Donnie Kohler is played by Dan Grimaldi. And Dan Grimaldi got this part because he was discovered by the director and I believe a producer when he was acting in an off-Broadway play. So he didn't have to, Dan Grimaldi didn't have to audition for this part. He just got it because they liked his acting and they thought he would be perfect for this role. Dan Grimaldi would also later go on to play in The Sopranos, to act, to play one of the characters in The Sopranos series. So, anyways, this film, like I said, is a slasher movie. It starts out, the main character, Donnie Kohler, is at his job, which is at a garbage incinerator. And at this garbage incinerator, there's some flammable object in the incinerator and it explodes and someone catches on fire and the other guys that work in the incinerator work hard to put the fire out. However, this Donnie Kohler character just stands there watching it and immediately his boss gets mad. He's like, why didn't you do anything to help? What's wrong with you? And then he's like, the flame. He needed to be purified by the flame. And now his boss thinks he's crazy, you know. And you could see that the other workers probably, you know, most likely alienate this Donnie character. However, he does appear to have a friend in an individual by the name of Bobby. And, um, you know, Bobby kind of doesn't think that this Donnie character is crazy and he's kind of um, empathetic toward him. So he's, he shows, you know, uh, some signs of empathy. Anyways, the Stani character goes home, goes back to this house, and you could see that his mother had just died. However, he's also looking over at some matches, and he has a flashback from when he was a little kid, and his mom would grab his arms and burn his arms over the stove and he had these burn marks because of it and she said she did this because you know to, to get the sin out of him because he would do bad things and that's what his mom would do also I think there's some mention that she did this because he was born out of wedlock Anyways, you know, that's what happens. And you could see that, you know, he experienced this horrendous child abuse. And that's very disturbing to see this in the film. I, I will say that right now. That's definitely a disturbing scene in this film. But uh, anyways, that happens. And you also could hear that the Donnie character is hearing voices. There's voices talking to him. And you never know if the voices talking to him are like what you would call personal demons or if they're actual demonic entities. You never know. You never know what they are. And uh, like I said, his mom had just died. And... The next scene is he's going to this uh, like flower shop, and he wanted he wanted to get some flowers for his mom, or maybe maybe buy a few other things, and he's talking to the woman who works there. They're about to close. She walks out. He follows her out the door, gets in his car. You see these guys kind of like hoodlums. And uh, you could see that the woman's nervous. So he offers to give her a ride home. She agrees. She gets in the car. But he says, first, we've got to stop at my mom's house. 
she doesn't want to, finally she agrees. Then he says, why don't you come inside my house? And she reluctantly agrees. You could tell she really wants nothing to do with this guy. I mean, this guy, this character, this Donnie Kohler character is not like a sociopathic character with charm or anything. I mean, he doesn't have any of that. And anyways, he brings her to his house. Now, one of the things he had done that they show you is he put up this like sheet metal in a room. You don't know why he put the sheet metal in this room, but you soon find out. The woman asks to make a phone call, and while she's making a phone call, he hits her on the head with like a blunt object, and then the next scene is she's chained to the ceiling and the floor, and then he takes a flamethrower and burns her alive. And the next scene is her screaming. Now, that was just a horrific scene in this movie. I mean, I talked about the, the psycho shower scene in another video. I also talked about the strobe light scene from Looking for Mr. Goodbar. This, I mean, this might be the most brutal of all three. I and mean, this is a very graphic scene. And that's why I'll say this movie's not for everybody. So if you don't like these types of slasher movies, this would not be a movie for you. However, they don't show him burning any of the other victims, just this first one. But yeah, like I said, it's it's a graphic scene in a movie that does not have a lot of blood and gore in it. It really doesn't. It just has this real disturbing scene which actually got this movie on a list in the UK called the Video Nasty List. I guess they edited some parts of this movie out in the UK. But uh, anyways, getting back to it, you could see this uh, Donnie character then goes and helps a woman whose car broke down. She then gets in the car, and the next scene is her burnt corpse. They didn't show how he did it or anything, but he just takes her, puts her in a room, and then he goes and he gets another victim. And same thing, although this victim, it almost appears like he abducts her from a store. And then he brings her back. And now these victims are burnt corpses. And he dresses them up in dresses. And he talks to them. And while he's doing this, there's also voices talking to him as well. He then receives a phone call from the Bobby character. And Bobby character, like I said, is the one person you think might be his friend. And Bobby says, you know, you kind of think at this point, this Bobby must be kind of a nice guy. However, in this scene, you find out he's not because he tells the Donnie character that, uh, you know, we could go to this disco this weekend. My wife's not even going to know we're gone. And I got two girls we could go with. So you could see that he has a wife and kids, and yet he wants to go to this disco. So... You can kind of tell that this um, Bobby character is kind of a scumbag. A anyways, while the uh, Donnie Kohler character is on the phone, there's a jump scare, and immediately you could hear, you know, his mom making this loud noise from the stair and you, the stairwell, and you could see his mom on the stairs, and you know, like I said, it's, it's a jump scare. It's a freaky scene. And there's a few more jump scares in this movie. There's another one where he's um, falling asleep. And as he's falling asleep, he's having a dream. And in the dream, there's like a crevice in the earth that opens up. And he's walking toward it. And then all these zombies 
pop out of the crevice and pull him into it. And uh, you kind of don't see that coming. So it's kind of a freaky scene. And like I said, he keeps hearing these voices. And, you know, you like I said, you never know if, if these voices are actual demonic entities or if they're just like, you know, like I said, what you would call like personal demons. You, you never know. Kind of like in The Shining, you never know if the Jack Nicholson character is actually talking to entities or if he's just imagining all of it. You know, another movie like this is Let's Scare Jessica to Death, where it's the same thing. You never know if she's talking or if, if she's seeing these spirits or if it's all in her head. You, you, you never know. You know, that's what makes these kinds of psychological thriller movies kind of chilling in a way. You, you, you just never know. But, uh, and I, I frequently talked about, you know, like a lot of modern movies, because they do not make movies like this anymore. And in modern movies, you know, they'll, they'll let you know. They'll spell everything out for you. You know, they don't allow you to kind of fill in the blanks or anything or kind of try to ponder upon stuff. You know, this film kind of makes you wonder about certain things. Anyways... The Donnie Kohler character ends up going to this disco. And like I said, this movie came out in 1979. So disco was popular. But before this character goes to the disco, before Donnie goes to the disco, he goes and he buys this like disco suit. And you could see he can't really like make up his own decisions or anything like that. He, he doesn't know what to get so he asks the guy who works there what should I buy you know and then he gets this disco suit and there's some other like childlike things about this character because when his mom dies he immediately puts on this disco music and starts jumping up and down you know like he's happy you know that he can now listen to his music but he's an adult you know so he's kind of acting like a seventh grader Almost, and there's a few other scenes where you see this like real immature side to this Donnie character. You know, this film is often compared to the film The Maniac, which came out about a year after this film. The Maniac has Joe Spinell as the main character, as the Maniac, but uh, Joe Spinell you know, who's a really good actor, it has just, like, a much better way of playing that character as this, like, sociopathic individual with a lot of charm. You know, this Donnie Kohler character has none of that. You know, and, uh, anyways, he, uh, this Donnie Kohler character ends up going to this disco, his friend Bobby's there. Bobby brought the two girls that he talked about. And uh, while the uh, disco music is playing, one of the girls grabs Donnie's arms to pull him onto the floor to dance. But as she does this, his arms are being held over like a candle. And he has flashbacks from when he was a kid and his mom burned him to try to get rid of his sin. So he then grabs the candle and he hits the woman on the head with the candle. Her hair catches on fire. Then the next scene is Donnie walking out of the disco, but his friend Bobby stops him. He's like, you know, what's going on, man? Why did you do that? And then Donnie just walks out of this disco. However, the girl's brother chases after this. Donnie character and they then go into like a parking garage and the girl's brother tackles Donnie hits him a number of times Donnie fights back is able to escape gets in a, his car drives off then immediately heads toward this bar and then you could see these two drunk girls coming out of a bar and he says hey you need a lift and they say sure so then you're just kind of like oh no you know these are going to be as 
next victims because really the scary thing in this film is how he picks up these women. You know, that's the scary thing because you know that he's a killer. You know, you, you know that. So when you see him do this, you're just like, oh no, you know, and you, you fear for these characters. You legitimately fear for these characters because you know it's not going to end well for them. Anyways, these girls get into Donnie's car. They drive off, and uh, they immediately notice that he's been beat up, that he's bleeding. And they ask Donnie, you know, how did that happen? And then immediately I'm wondering, oh, no, is he going to go there? Is he going to go there? And then he does. So, of course, he lies and he says, well, there were three guys, they all had knives and they popped out of nowhere and jumped me. But I showed them who's boss because I was in the Marines. I was a Green Beret. Now, even though the girls are intoxicated, one of them is able to call his bluff and notice that he's lying and says, wait, the Green Berets are not the Marines, they're the Army. And uh, he's then like, well, it's ac I was actually in a special division of the Marines. You know, so you immediately know he's lying. And then he's like, do you want to come over to my house for a party? And they agree, okay, why not? Now, the next scene, of course, is uh, his friend Bobby trying to run to his house because he knows this Donnie character is going to do some bad things. Another thing that I should mention is this Donnie character did go see a priest. And he did tell the priest that, you know, he's troubled, he's in trouble. And he mentions to the priest the, uh, you know, shows him like the burn marks that he had from his mom. And I think the priest is just kind of like... Well, you know, that was a long time ago. You should just forget about that. A anyways, what happened? But anyways, what happens is this uh, Bobby character goes, gets the priest, and they run over to Donnie's house because they know Donnie is going to do some bad things. And the girls then go into the house. They notice how big this house is. And... You know, they notice, you know, the architecture. It's kind of like a lot of architecture that, you know, you wouldn't see anymore. A lot of real intricate, like, woodwork inside. And a lot of these, like, late Victorian era houses, like, had that. It's like real intricate woodwork that would be so expensive today. But, uh, anyways, that's, uh, what happens, these girls are in the house. Then uh, one of them disappears. The other one's trying to find her. Then the next scene is of Bobby and the priest running to the house. Then they get to the house. And immediately they hear the girls. And they see that the girls are in that metal room with the sheet metal chained up they free them and then uh the priest then encounters donnie who has the uh flamethrower and is also wearing this like asbestos suit this is what he looks like you know he's wearing this like asbestos suit kind of like a welding helmet and he has a flamethrower and then he gets the priest with the flamethrower and then uh, what happens next is he then goes into the room where there's the corpses. And this room, he has this room with all his victims and they're all burnt corpses. But he dressed them up wearing dresses and he talks with them. And you could clearly tell that this Donnie character is insane. And what then happens next is the corpses stand up. You don't know 
if there are zombies or what, and they immediately move toward Donnie and start grabbing him. You don't know if this is in his head, but while this is happening, he's shooting the flamethrower everywhere. And then he tries to go to the door, but his mom is blocking the door, and there's fire going everywhere. And what then happens is he burns himself to death. Then the film ends with uh, another boy who is also hearing voices and has a mom who is also abusing him in the same way Donnie was abused. And then the movie ends. Now, I didn't think that ending like that was necessary. Sometimes these movies would have endings like that that were completely unnecessary. You know, I, I think maybe they were trying to create some kind of a uh, outlet to build a sequel upon. But a sequel never happened because I don't believe this movie was ever really too big. It's largely been forgotten. It came out, like I said, in 79, one year after Halloween had come out. When Halloween came out, it sort of influenced all these slasher films. So you started getting all these slasher films because Halloween did very well at the box office. It didn't have a big budget, but, you know, it was the least expensive movie ever made at the time that then made the most amount at the box office. So it held the record for about a year until Mad Max beat it. But, uh, yeah, this movie cost $250,000 to make. And like I said, I don't think it did too well, although there are a lot of people, like I said, that do like this film. Not surprisingly, Quentin Tarantino is a big fan of this film. And even showed this film at his first film festival back in 1996. So he's a fan of this film. Now, like I said, this film is not for everyone. Not everyone would like this kind of movie. But if you do like slasher films and you like psychological horror films, I see no reason why you wouldn't like it. I myself... Um, I thought, I, I I would say that I, I thought it was good. I I didn't hate it. I don't know. I I didn't really like it though, but I I didn't hate it either. I might have been one of the rare people to kind of be in the middle, in, in regards to this movie. But uh, it definitely had some scary atmosphere in it, and it had some scary creepy scenes you know it's not a lot of movies I really find scary but you know this like I said it did have some scary atmosphere and some scary scenes some jump scares like I said so I I would you know re recommend this film if you're looking for a movie a horror movie that you haven't seen if you do like the slasher genre, like I said, yes, you'll like this film. But uh, anyways, that's all I've got. If you've watched this video, as always, I thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and have a good night.